Welcome to Net Panel is it done? And tonight we're going to just have exhibition matches as usual for Wednesday. We're going to have Clone and Fail Thoughts. This is actually going to be a set of rather high level exhibition matches. I usually would reserve those for Saturdays, but now with Clan Wars on Saturdays, I'm thinking it might be worth doing this from time to time on Wednesdays. I'm still going to probably. I'm still going to try to find like lower level matches on Wednesdays as I was trying to do before to make sure that I'm not just focusing on the high level players to the exclusion of everybody else. But there were some replays that looked like that might be interesting. So I thought I'd take a look. Anyway, first off, Felt Us and Clone on Living Land. This map is very bot focused. You want to see, you're going to see players basically moving around for usually the center, although unlike Deadlands, not as much. Like the edges are definitely very viable in this map. I mean, Living Lands. Living Lands try to. So it sought to buff the edges at the expense of the center, unlike Deadlands, where the center was this really powerful thing. Anyway, Fail Thoughts going for Cloaky, Clone going for Jump Bots, which is something that we've seen a lot more of players recently in general. Now, I don't know what that has to do with the recent Firewalker change. I mean, that wasn't that recent. That was like a month and a half ago now. But they have certainly gotten popular. I've seen them get played a lot. Well, Fail Thoughts going for the old reliable Cloaky, and... Well... Early starts from both, like early... Scouts from both. Clone, however, going for, not surprisingly, a early reclaim strategy. We haven't really seen this from, I think, Clone too much recently, but Clone is the type of player I would I would expect to do this. Like, early reclaim for Clone, that makes, that just fits their style. They have a bit more defensive late game economic style. So yeah, grabbing this reclaim makes perfect sense. On the other hand, Failthos not going for that reclaim at all, which would be over here, mind you. But yeah, Failthos not going for the reclaim at all. Is aware of Clone's factory choice. Are they going to change up the strategy at all? It looks like probably not. The typical popular thing right now against Jump Bot Factory is just Glaive. Like, try to micro your Glaives well. The way that you're, that the Cloaky Bot's kind of designed to deal with Jump Bot is Zeus, but then Zeus gets dealt with by moderators, which then you have to deal with, with Glaives. But if you can deal with the Pyros with Glaives, then the moderators don't even need to come up. And if they do, well, the Glaives all, are already there. You can deal with them. So, Glaives, like Tick Glaive, is more commonly used, I've noticed, or at least Akronim uses it a lot, and that's the matchup. Like, Akronim is usually the Cloaky Bot player that I see in the Cloaky Jump Bot matchups. So, I don't see any Ticks yet, but we could very quickly see Ticks. The Glaives are definitely out. I don't expect to see Zeus quickly, just on account of, well, economy, really. Zeus are expensive, they're like 350 metal each. And unfortunately for that Pyro, getting caught out by that Lotus. Getting a little bit too greedy. These glaives could actually take it out. And they are in fact doing... There we go. That's what we want to see. Failed us. They knew what was up. Unfortunately for them, they are also starting to fall behind in terms of economy. I mean, in terms of overall military, Kloon did get that reclaim early on. So they are going to be able to build up more quickly. And also, getting the center as well as the sides. Failed us, on the other hand, now just going for the center. But they haven't gone for the sides up here either. I mean, this is contested. Like, they're expanding along the contested side. But this area, the northwest is totally uncontested. I'm curious if they're going to go for it. Looks like, well, that scythe does not hold much hope. I mean, scythes are scythes obviously used for assassin. Like they're attacking single targets, powerful targets, and a bit of scouting too. I'm guessing this is going to be a scout scythe. Just try to see if this has been opened up. If clones going for this north side at all, and indeed they're not. So I think Felthos will probably expand along the west side once they get a chance. Of course, I don't know. Did they see? Yes, they did. They do. They are fully aware of this area right here. I think they know the clone's commander is there too. Well, they will in a moment. So they know that the commander's there, or at least they know that something's there. They are in a decent position to try to at least see it. They can see what's going on. They can't deal with it yet. That scythe has. Oh no! What? Why are you doing that, Fail Thoughts? I mean, that scythe. Okay, can deal a bit of damage, but that's really risky. I mean, the commander is right there. Moderator is right there. It's going to deal with the scythe right up. Oh, wow. That scythe is the luckiest scythe in the world. Able to get away, recloak, and the moderator was just out of range. That was really close. Extremely risky play from Feldos. It did, however, pay off. Like, I mean, well, they killed a Lotus and Mechs and a Defender for nothing. The scythe is repairing itself, and now it, like, that's free. That's free damage. Very risky play. It did pay off. But Felthos is going to have to be careful in the future because that was, like, that moderator, had it been, like, a step closer, would have killed that scythe. 
but now it itself is dead. But yeah, that's the thing. That scythe was really... I'm a bit surprised, though, that Felthas is not sending it around to try to see what else is around here, try to scout out the base, try to maybe... I mean, at this point, the main base has one Lotus, and while getting to that would be a little bit tricky, a full health scythe should have no problems doing so. At this point, though, Felthas not expanding over to the west side, despite the fact that they know it's not contested. I'm very surprised by this. Clone at this point, with the economic lead, they're going to be able to just pull out of this. It doesn't matter if the scythe is around. Even if it is harassing things successfully, took out one metal extractor, which is great. But that's only really good in conjunction with building up the western, the entire northwest undeveloped side. Neither player is going for this. Clone, like I said, I can kind of see. The clone is basically taking the southeast. Like They have that. And they're taking the center pretty strongly. But they haven't taken the southwest at all. I mean, they haven't taken the north. Feldhaus hasn't taken the west. I mean, Felthus doesn't, like, they have as much as they're reasonably going to have for building this up, unless they want to try to attack. If they're going to try to contest the southeast, then sure, and focus your forces there, but the northwest is uncontested. That's free money. And there we go, Felthus finally taking the free money. And interestingly, Klun still not taking, okay, so Klun's not taking this, is trying to find out where that scythe has gone off to. And is Felthus going to attack that again? With more scythes, too. Okay, I... I realize it worked the last time, but I still don't agree with this. I still think that the better option would be to attack the main, like, with size. See what's going on in the main base, attack that directly. And this scythe, that scythe's screwed. How, that was very unfortunate. That was, just got caught out. But that's the thing, like, don't go over this front line thing. If you go over the front line thing, that's where all the opponent's forces are. Use your glaives, use your, well, I guess if you had them, Rocco's. But like, use the forces, use your frontline forces on the front line, use the sides. The sides can work okay as a force multiplier, I suppose, but, like, use them in the back, use them to harass around. I mean, the glaives can deal with the moderators no problem, or with little problem. And, I mean, Felthas is attacking on the front lines, they have, and now they're taking the western sides, so they're starting to catch up for economy, but they've been behind all game, and that's gonna, that's still costing them. Like, all these moderators here, the only thing that's working in Feldhaus' favor is that moderators do not type counter glaives. Clone seems to be playing, assuming that Zeus are coming. They're kind of playing an autopilot. Because, I mean, moderators... Well, I would say that, except for the fact that Feldhaus is going on Rocco's, and moderators will work decently well in that respect. But yeah, glaives would work fine in that case. However, Clone's commander... In a tight spot, but I don't think they're going to die. I think the defense is... Nope, they are going to die. Never mind, I was wrong. Clone's commander going down. That should even out the economy. But even then, Clone still has the larger force by... Oh, whoops. They still have larger force by quite a margin from the looks of it. I mean, just the moderators alone. That's... Well, it's 1,200 for the moderators alone. But Felthos is now spamming on Glaives. There we go. Now they get the type counters going. And another Scythe coming out. This is... I'm just surprised they're going for the sides and not attacking the back. They're not trying to go for the caretaker. It's a little late now, but when that first scythe was there, if they had scouted around, they would have seen one lotus, they would have seen one caretaker, and they would have seen the freaker. And they would have been able to take all of that out because the jump bot factory was producing nothing at the time and only had 10 build power to work with. That would have been a very powerful attack. But that's not happening, and instead they're going to be attacked over the southwest, but why are they sending their entire force there? That's two pyros. The, the lotuses will deal with them no problem. I'm not sure why they're sending their entire force, but Clone might be able to take advantage of that if they realize that Felthos is doing this, and they kind of do. They aren't fully aware their radar isn't quite able to see everything, but they would have been aware that stuff, a lot of stuff's moving to the west side once the pyros are moving to the west side. That's basically everything. Like, Clone, as soon as they get through these defenders, if they can get through these defenders and lotuses, which... I mean, they got Jack, so they have a means of doing so. They can break through that. The entire eastern side is going to fall. Like, Felthos' west side is relatively strong, but they were they just moved everything out of position. And the Jacks are being taken... They're being used to take advantage of that. The attack on the eastern side begins, but... Actually, that first Jack is not in the best position. Taking a lot of damage, but still has... I mean, 2,000 health. That's still respectable. Unfortunately, no Pyros. Pyros would be great in this situation. That's the one thing, like, Pyros would, be, would have been awesome support there. Moderators are okay, but Pyros would have been wonderful. At this point, Fail Thoughts continue to push out, and I'm a bit surprised they... Okay, going for Sharpshooter kind of makes sense. I mean, to deal with the Moderators, it's not a bad idea. Deal with the Jacks, it's also a decent idea. What I'm a little bit surprised at is that they aren't... They aren't trying to go for... Well... 
I guess it's not surprising they're going to go for air. Jump bots do have good anti-air, so air would not be the best idea right about now. Thinking more, I'm a bit surprised they aren't going... Oh, I'm actually a bit surprised they are going for sharpshooters, because sharpshooters aren't a bad idea. It's just kind of expensive. It's a very heavyweight unit. I'm actually a little bit surprised they aren't going for erasers. I mean, that'd be an easy way to deal with the moderators, is just eraser in the glaives right next to them and then tear them apart. Like, the glaives just destroy them. But we don't see that at all. I mean, we don't see much eraser play to begin with, but I'm a bit surprised it's not happening. Now, of course, coming to factory switches, I could... I can't really see the use of gunships or, or planes too much. Archangels would shut that down. Although, Archangels are quite expensive. It would be worth it. Actually, come to think of it, Archangels are five... Yeah, actually, an Archangel, like, forcing them to build an Archangel, that's the cost of the factory right there. And if that factory, if that unit does anything, if it kills anything, it's paid for itself. But at this point, I think it's just a question of Felthas having a smaller army that's kind of, in a lot of ways, out of position. Like, they're stretched along here. A lot of their money has been invested into the sides. I don't know how many sides they've built this entire game. It's got to be at least eight or nine. And when the 250 a pop, that's like 2,000, that's 2,000 metal or so being spent entirely on sides. A lot of metal... Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry about that. Okay... Why is the game frozen? This computer is falling apart. Okay, sorry about that. That was very strange, but... Anyway... Fail Thoughts is... Yeah, they're kind of in a really tight spot just due to the jacks. And they had no idea the jacks were coming either, rather surprisingly. I just, I'm kind of surprised they didn't scout that out. I mean, they had the sides there. Okay, they must have known the sharpshooters. But, I mean, the jacks... Jacks are kind of tough to deal with. I mean, the thing is, jacks cannot possibly hit air. So that's one thing. Jacks, of course, are also kind of slow. So glaives aren't a terrible idea, but you need about three or four dozen glaives to be useful. While the sharpshooters are doing a decent job of dealing with the support forces, the jacks themselves, they just tank the shots really well. Honestly, given the living lands, I almost... I would almost recommend switching to light vehicles, setting up a few wolverines, and then just having a minefield to deal with those jacks. I'm not sure that that would work well, but it just seems like something that would be fairly powerful to deal with a lot of this stuff coming in here. It's just, like, wolverine assist. And that's, yeah, the puppy's coming in here. I mean, bear in mind, when you have cloaked units to deal with, sending in a bunch of light forces like puppies or darts, that's a great idea. That's what you should do. That's exactly what you should do. Clone knows it, taking full advantage of it. Their economy may not be in the best position right now, but if, as long as they don't lose, as long as they're able to use these, I mean, these puppies are especially going to be useful, just given, like, Rocco sharpshooter composition, puppies counter that directly. You need to have... Not even screening glaives. Even screening glaives won't work very well. Warriors should work okay, and they're going for shield bot instead. Are they going to go for outlaws? I mean, outlaws would kind of make sense. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Not sure, though. I haven't made it clear what they have planned yet. Yeah, Kloon just going for the desperation play off the puppies. Failed out still with an economic advantage. They can definitely produce a larger army, but it's not the right type. And outlaws are indeed the unit of choice. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna beat the puppies out right and also it'll slow down the jacks nicely allowing them to be easier to deal with but mostly anti-puppy force that's really what it's there for like deal with the puppies and then you don't have to worry about anything and yeah against the jacks one outlaw is not that useful multiple outlaws sure but one outlaw not so much Yeah, that's the thing. They don't have a whole lot of spray. I mean, they have the Warriors a decent spray force. The only problem with the Outlaws is that the puppies can get in range and, well, kill it, like so. So I'm really not... I really don't see why the Outlaw was used. I think that the best option would probably have been either to go for Napalm Bombers or for gil for killing... or for going, like, just mass, mass, mass Glaives. Like, huge numbers of Glaives. Because Glaives are a massive damage output. Warriors are also massive damage output. A warrior Rocco would have worked okay. The problem was that the counter for Warrior, that is the moderator, was already in play. So that would have been an extremely terrible idea. I mean, 
Anyone who's seen me play knows I love warriors, so for me to say that is a big deal. I'm curious how much metal... Oh, they're pretty even, too. Yeah, they were very even for metal production. I think... Yeah, Felthas for most of that game actually had more units. Clone just ended up killing them off pretty quickly. Didn't really matter. Yeah, Clone, most units killed. Felthas, most units built. So it really was kind of an army efficiency thing. And the thing is, when you're playing Cloaky, is that Cloaky doesn't have any real single utility unit. Like, they aren't a utility factory. That's not how they work. <sighs> I must make a... Yeah, they do. They, you, they rely on numbers to a decent extent. They rely on counter types, and they rely on sneaky play. Like, once you get into the late game with Cloaky Bot Factory, you need to be using erasers, you need to be using ticks, you need to be just generally doing tricky stuff. Because they're a tricky factory. Yeah, they're kind of easy to set up with glaives at first. Glaives are really powerful. But they're they're the factory of tricks. Anyway. Alright, sorry about that. We're going to be moving on to a game between... ...and Drone. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.